albums. For me, the process of taking the brush to the record, you know, lifting the dust cover on the turntable, turning it on, carefully dropping the needle. I like that manual activity. I like that process. I get the same enjoyment when I build a fire. And learning how to cook with fire, we're driven by, I want to know. I'm curious. Like an old friend, takes you right back to the kitchen. You can almost smell the cake that your grandma made on your birthday. Have you ever laid on your back under a poplar tree? Thinking about all your memories, looking at the sky. Wondering why this feels like home. I've always been curious. I was always the, the young boy that asked way too many questions because I wanted to know. Growing up in Lynchburg was a great, great town to grow up in. It's really pretty. Loving mom, loving family. The family was big and it was important. We celebrated a lot of holidays and festivities, big gatherings where food was important. My grandmother was a great cook. My mom was a good cook. My dad was a good cook. I liked to fish, I liked to hunt. My first version of surf and turf was cooking squirrel and native brook trout that I would caught and harvested myself. So I, I, I liked to cook as a, a young boy. I like remembering the people that, are, that shaped me as a person. When my grandmother passed away, the family got to ask for certain things and what I wanted was her cutting board Bob Davis was my grandmother and my grandfather's best friend, and he made this for her. She cut the watermelon rind or the watermelon pickles that she was making when she passed away from a stroke. When I use her cutting board, I think of her. All of my sauce pots that I use in competition barbecue, they were my mother's, Charlotte. So when I get prepare my sauces for competition barbecue, I get to think of her. I've got a a big, fancy, cool-looking Texas offset pit, and it's got two pits, and one of them's named Florence, and one of them's named Charlotte after my, after my grandmother and my mom. I felt like I needed some discipline. I ended up looking at all the armed forces. The Marine Corps stood out to me because of the discipline that they instill. So I went and met with a Marine Corps recruiter. I signed the contract for four years and went home and told my parents. I think my dad was, was happy because I think he probably believed I needed some discipline as well. My mom was very upset. I went from Lynchburg, Virginia to Paris Island to Marine Corps training. That was a big adjustment. That was a big difference in life for me. In the Marine Corps, they break you down and then they build you back up. They make you question who you are as an individual. It was tough. It was tough, but when I, when I graduated from Paris Island, I was strong, I was physically fit, I was mentally fit. I knew I could go through anything that life had to offer. The Marine Corps was very powerful in, in shaping me. It, it was the perfect place to go from the Marine Corps to Chef Alain in his kitchen. His kitchen was intense. He was intense. We're dear, dear friends. But when I was a young man going into Chef Alain's kitchen, that food was about precision. That food was about perfection. I have a Friday afternoon. Uh, I'm busy getting for the weekend, and I have a young Marine guy knocking on the back door and open the door, and they say, oh, what can I do for you? And right away, he say, I want to be a chef, and I hear you're the best. Wow, I somehow tell him, then it's not going to be easy. My way of teaching to a young guy like that is to go, I'm not going to, it's going to be tough. And so you move on and Tuffy did what I told him. I make him do all the nasty job, cleaning fish, meat, you name it. Not to break it down, but to teach him the right way because that's the way I was, I was that's the way I learned it. I thought about you and I thought about your restaurant and I thought, 
that's the place to learn. But I didn't think you were gonna call me. So the next morning I knocked on your door and you opened it. And I said, Chef, I'll give you Wednesdays and Saturdays from eight to 12, I'll work for free. I would make mistakes because I didn't have a lot of experience and you would correct me. It was stressful for me, but I'll remember yeah. one day, one day I cooked the whole day and you didn't yell at me for the first time. But I was getting better. Yeah. It was long hours and it was hard work and it was discipline. And I think when you have those kind of experiences with somebody, it makes you a brother. We have that bone and I feel my, my best man, my wedding. I was his best man for his wedding. It's, it's, it, it, it goes to your heart. I respect him dearly, you respect me. <laughs> Barbecue was really humbling for me though because because of my French background with Chef Alain and learning how to make all this high-end food and then my wife and I had started a, a off-premise catering company called A Sharper Palette and we eventually grew that business to where we had 50 full-time employees and 100 part-time employees and I wasn't cooking anymore, I was just managing the business. I was just doing day-to-day -day decision making and managing and, and as, a, as a cook, as a chef, I was missing my passion, which was cooking, and so I knew I wanted to come up with a new culinary activity just to learn. No different than when I was 12 and 13. And for whatever reason, I knew in my mind that I wanted to get a pit, and I wanted to learn how to cook with just an all wood burning fire. I got a pit, and I got some hickory, and I made a rub, and I got some pork butts, and I seasoned these pork butts up, and I built a fire in this pit, and I put this meat on there, and I ruined a big old load of meat. But I just was steadfast in trying to like get better at it. When you cook a rack of ribs or you cook a pork shoulder, it's an investment of time. I like cooking with fire because I like how manual it is. I like that there's no electricity involved, that it's just a fire and taking a nice cut of meat, trying to coax something really delicious out of it. So when I found out that there was a competition barbecue circuit, I entered a contest in my hometown of Lynchburg, Virginia, and I came up with a name for my team, Cool Smoke. And how I came up with that name was, first of all, my catering company was very serious. It was a lot of stress. And so I was hoping barbecue was going to be cool. It was going to be relaxed. It was going to be chill. I also thought, all right, I'm cooking at lower temperatures. Cool Smoke became my name. But I got two calls that day. I got, a, I think, a second place pork and a seventh place brisket. I was really excited to, to get a couple of trophies at the competition, but it was the people. Uh, the people that I met that weekend, I really enjoy. And I always say I like to go to a contest with clean pit, good wood, sharp knives, fresh rub, good sauce, and great meat. Part of it's mental. Competition barbecue is mental. I don't know what you're cooking. I don't know what the judges want, but if I can go into my cook and know I've got all the tools and all the products that I need to cook my best food, that's a, that's a huge step in being mental, mentally prepared. My dad, George, who's unfortunately passed, he became my teammate over time. And I think people, when they think of Cool Smoke today, think of it being a father-son team. And my dad and I have driven all over the country together and had some amazing, amazing father-son experiences through competition barbecue. I was blessed to be inducted into the Barbecue Hall of Fame in 2018. And and my dad was out there watching me receive this award. And I spoke to my dad, you know. <laughs> he, uh, he used to say I was, uh, he was the luckiest dad in the world. And um, I said, we're a couple of long ways since I wrecked your truck when I was 16. But uh, anyway, so I, I, we just came back from Memphis, May recently. and. Whenever I light a fire in the competition circuit now, I, I look up and look up at heaven and think of dad. Someone sent me a, a photograph they had taken of dad and I and it's framed and this is when we got our sixth world championship in Memphis in May 2019. Someone captured our image of, image of us uh, looking at each other and it was pretty cool. I always said we were like the little, the little train that could, the little engine that could. 
When we won our third world championship, it was at the American Royal Open. And one of the things that you win is the, the head pit master gets a ring made. And I called up, uh, I called up the American Royal and, uh, and I asked if they could make a second ring for my dad. And uh, Kim said she would and so, um, his birthday was December 4th and I was working at the restaurant and I called him up and I said, hey dad, uh, come on by, I got, you know, got something for you for your birthday. So he came by the restaurant and I gave him a card and uh, it just was a happy birthday card, you know. And he said, oh, thank you. So then I gave him a box and uh, uh, he opened the box and it was a world championship ring. He put that on and uh, he looked out at that ring and looked at me and said, you know, today's my company's party. And I wasn't gonna go, but he says, I think I'm gonna go now. And uh, he wore that ring every day. He, uh, when he passed, he, he had that ring on. And uh, he was very, uh, he was very proud about all the success that we had on the circuit. Where I'm at, where my heart's at these days, my real joy has moved towards teaching, being a mentor, helping people to cook better whether it's in the kitchen or in the backyard. When I'm teaching, I always talk about, I want the meat to be the star. And then I want the rub and the sauce and the smoke to be supporting flavors, supporting backdrop flavors. I think cooks, people that like to cook, can all relate to the pleasure and the happiness that you experience when you cook for somebody. Chef Alain and I both get a thrill out of cooking something that's really delicious for people and watching their faces, watching them enjoy it. Cooking has taken me on a journey in life that I could have never imagined. Through cooking, I've traveled all over the United States. People that I've met all over the world, all over the country, I, I know what people say and I feel grateful that they say it. I hope when I'm gone, I hope people will say I was a nice guy.